And now it's time for us to explore Cape Town. Unfortunately, due to inclement weather, it doesn't look like this. So we decided to take a day tour down to the Cape of Good Hope and explore the coastline. The coastline was truly spectacular with townships overlooking the ocean, spectacular mountain ranges, small coves with exclusive private villas overlooking the hostile Atlantic Ocean. stop was Cape Point National Park and catch a tram to the top of the cliff where the lighthouse is situated and the wind was blowing a gale. The lighthouse has been operating since 1857 to warn ships of the rugged coastline. and then it was just a short drive to the Cape of Good Hope. A must see in South Africa is the Boulder Beach Penguin Colony, where you can witness penguins in their natural habitat. Meeting up with our South African friends Kubus and Erika, they took us for a drive to the Twelve Apostles Holiday Resort. Overlooking the Indian Ocean, the decor takes you back to the old colonial lifestyle. these unusual features on the waterfront. We sat on our thrones and looked at the cloud-covered ranges. Our friends live in this spectacular multi-level home on their olive orchard. Kubus owns and runs a very successful timber and construction business. His skills were evident right throughout the house. This stump actually held up the front stairs and weighed three and a half ton. Just about everything in the house was made from timber, including reclaimed stumps turned into feature furniture pieces. There were timber light fittings, even a timber vanity and bath. Their home was uniquely spectacular. We're introduced to something that's in every South African house, braai cooking. The following day, Cubas took us down to the Dunes West Coast for us to experience his favourite pastime.
following day was Father's Day in South Africa, so Cubis took us to a winery for breakfast and met up with his son and daughter. Nelson Mandela was incarcerated in many prisons. However, this is where he was finally released, giving his infamous fist pump, signalling freedom and the beginning of the end of the apartheid movement. With cloudy conditions still hampering our attempt to get to Table Mountain, there was nothing else to do but visit more wineries. on a hill this structure which Gervis explains it's a monument to Afrikaans. KWV is one of the largest wineries in South Africa. At one stage, they controlled all the wine sold in South Africa. It's also where Cubis' father worked as an accountant for many years. Then we were treated to an overnight stay in their beach house up the west coast. However, it's too cold for swimming. We wandered out for dinner at the local resort, beautiful location overlooking the harbour and great views back to the city. Then it was back to their house for an open fire. Not a bad view to wake up to in the morning and then it was off to a small local yacht club where we had breakfast for $3.50 Australian, including coffee. This would have to be the most unusual winery we visited when in South Africa, called the Goat Shed. Then it was off to another winery. One thing we found in South Africa, we don't think there's any such thing as bad wine. They're all beautiful. I think this photo says it all. On our way back to Cape Town, we noticed there was still a lot of cloud on the mountain ranges. However, we were assured that it will clear so we could do our trip to Cable Mountain, as Table Mountain has been covered in cloud the whole time we've been here. And then in the afternoon, there it was, cloud free. Next morning, we're off to Table Mountain.
it was time for us to leave our friends staying at the President's Hotel as they had their own plans to depart for their holiday. We caught an Uber the next day to explore the waterfront district of, of Cape Town and it was a cultural experience. Our last day in Cape Town took us for another Uber ride through the centre of town, finding these strange structures. I've been simply built them in the wrong spot. This overpass also built at the wrong spot. The homeless have taken it over. One of the places we wanted to explore on our last day was Robin Island. It's off the coast of Cape Town and was a prison where Nelson Mandela and other prisoners were held during apartheid. As part of the package, you were put on a shuttle bus to tour the island. Unfortunately, with the style of bus, sightseeing wasn't real brilliant. On these buses, if to tease this, Table Mountain was not covered in cloud, but the bottom half was. Our tour guide, who was an ex-prisoner, took us on a tour through the prison. He gave us first-hand experiences some of the atrocities in this prison and how blacks were treated totally different to white prisoners. Well, it was the last episode of our South African trip. Uh, we had a great time over there, and um, people have asked us, would we recommend going over there? Too right, would you? And it was fantastic. The, the um, people are beautiful, the culture's fantastic, the scenery is breathtaking. We thoroughly recommend it. Not to mention the wine is pretty <laughs> damn good, too. What was the one we fell in love with? Moscato. No, not Moscato. Oh. <laughs> Pinotage. Pinotage. It's my favourite. Yeah, it's a pretty good one, Pinotage. But great motes. Yes. But yeah, it's just. Yeah. Only South Africa does it. Better than Australia. Well, apart from that, <laughs> the wine was pretty good, yeah. But, but yeah, but anyway, look, uh, if you're ever thinking about going to South Africa, yeah, look, there's some dodgy areas in certain places, but as long as you just take precautions, uh, try and travel with groups of people. Um, we really weren't bothered at all, but we were travelling with a group and also that bloody dog in the background again. Um, but we were travelling with a group and uh, it was a lot safer to do so. But it's like anywhere travelling, you just have to have your wits about you and, exactly. and be, just 
conscious of things that are around you. So. Mm. But we're also going to thank our South African friends, Kubus, hopefully I said that right this time, and Erica, for their hospitality, and we hope to see them in Australia one day where we return the hospitality. <laughs> <laughs> Mental blank. We had, we had such an amazing time with them. We haven't seen them for years, but it was just fantastic to catch up with them. Indeed. Well, we'll be taking another break for a while. We will be doing some more overseas travel. I'm not sure whether I'll do a YouTube on that one. Back to Pommy Land and Italy and so forth, but we'll see what happens. But if we do any caravanning trips, we'll uh, do a bit of a record of that as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you like it. If you didn't, don't tell anyone. If you did like it, don't forget to share it. Enjoy. Okay, thank you for watching. <laughs>